I'm talking about the cross of Calvary. The cross of Calvary. It, um, without the cross, we have no Christianity. Without the cross, without the cross, we are doomed. And Jesus Christ died on the cross, and that's what I want to talk about. Paul said the preaching of the cross to those that are perishing, it's foolishness. But to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. And so we need to believe the Lord. We need to look up to the Lord. We need to trust the Lord for this salvation, the cross. I'm talking about the cross. It's, it's a dangerous message to the kingdom of darkness. It's a message the devil would not want you to hear. But you will hear it in Jesus' name. And you will not only hear, but you will understand. Because God wants you to understand. I want to begin by reading from 1 John chapter 3, verse 1. We'll read verse 1 to 3. 1 John chapter 3, verse 1 to 3. It says, Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. So there is a call to look, to behold, to understand, to perceive the kind of love the Father has bestowed upon us. And it says that we should be called sons of God. And that's who we are. Therefore it says the world knoweth us not because it knew him not. Beloved, now we are the sons of God. It doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when, that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. And every man that hath this hope in him purifieth himself. So, see what love, what love. We are living in a world of hate and a world of, of misinterpretation of the word love. Love is not what people call love. When we talk about loving somebody, we are saying there is something we can get from them. But the love of God, the love we are talking about, is completely different from that kind of love. And he said, Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. That's why the preaching of the cross is such a powerful, powerful message. Because, because it's about love. It's the deepest level of love. Behold, what manner of love. You that is not loved. You that feel scared. You that feels confused, the Lord is saying, Behold, open your eyes and see what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us for one purpose, that we should be called the sons of God. So the death of Christ is completely different from what people think. It wasn't just a death. It wasn't just a cross. It was, it was the motivation behind it was love. But it's not the love of men, it's the love of God. It is the love of God was the motivational factor of this, 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 this cross. What happened on the cross was pushed by love. So it says now we are the sons of God after we have experienced this love. And it says it does not yet appear what we shall be. But there's one thing we know that when he shall appear... And I tell you, even when he appears to you, when the Lord appears to you, you're going to be like him, even here. That's why people will call you a Christian because they see you looking like Christ because you are looking like him because he has appeared to you. And how does he appear to you? You seek him. You seek him and you shall find him. And everyone that has this hope purifies himself. Saints. It's not, not to wait to this. We've got to purify ourselves. That's the gospel. And so, the power of this love is amazing. It's that love that, that makes the gospel so powerful, so glorious. I'm reading from the book of Luke, chapter 23, verse 32 to 33. This is the basis of the gospel. Without this message, there is no gospel. There is no... There is no Christianity. Without this cross that we are talking about, there is no Christianity. Bible says, and there were also, I'm reading 23, verse 32 to 33. 
And there were also two other malefactors led with him to be put to death. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, one on their right hand and the other on the left. So Jesus has come carrying his own cross. When he's carrying that cross, that cross is your cross. That cross is my cross. That's why I'm supposed to, that's where I am supposed to be crucified because of my sins. For the wages of sin is death. And I was supposed to die there because the Bible says, the person that does not have the Son of God shall not see life, but the wrath of God is upon him. So I had the wrath of God upon me. You had the wrath of God upon you. But Jesus Christ carried this cross, which you should have carried to go and be, be crucified on it. He wasn't carrying it for fun. We see some people during Easter who carry the cross and pretend to be crucified. But this is not, this was not a joke. This was a motivation by God's love. God's un unbelievable love. God's love that does not know any bounds. God's love that will, will accommodate everybody, even those that are not worthy. The love of God. That love is what took Jesus to Calvary. Carrying that cross and he was crucified at that place when they got, got to the, this place, Calvary. Calvary is the place where all sin was taken away. When they got to Calvary, there they crucified him. There they crucified my Lord. He was moved with love. God was moved with love to act the way he was acting. It was love unspeakable. It is love that cannot be understood. The world cannot understand this kind of love. The world does not know this kind of love where God comes from his throne, comes from, from his elevated place and comes to people that are lowly. We don't want to be associated with people that are lowly. If you are poor, if you are small, if you don't have a reputation, people don't want to be associated with you. But that is not my God. My God loves you. He will be as you come down to where you are, right in the valley. He will pick you from the pit because he loves you. Behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the, the, the sons of God. And this is going to change your life. You that once has been thinking of committing suicide. You that has been feeling so depressed. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. You that is discouraged. You that is scared of this COVID. You think it will get you. It will kill you. Come on. I want to let you know. Lift up your eyes today. and Behold what manner of love. The Father has bestowed upon us that we should be called the sons of God. And because of that, even if you are attacked by this COVID, I will ask you to confess with the psalmist. He said, he, he said, I shall not die, but I shall live and declare the works of the Lord. Let the works of the Lord be seen in your life. As, as, as God works in your lives. So behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. And it says when they got to Calvary, the place you were supposed to be crucified, that place that was you that it was supposed to lie on that cross, it is you that should have borne the pain of the nails from the Roman soldier. It's you that should have been, been crying there on the cross saying, Father, why have you forsaken me? Why am I forsaken? It's you that should have been on that cross suffering and saying, I thirst and nobody would give you any water to drink. It was supposed to be you. But behold, what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. I want you to know that you are loved, you are loved, you are loved. The Father loves you, the Father loves you. He loves you in spite of what you are, in spite of where you've gone. The Lord still loves you. Because I see these two malefactors, the King James calls 
the malefactors they were. Today's language we should say these two crooks. There were two crooks. There were two murderers. One on the left and one on the on the right. This is where your master was, was crucified. And why is he in the middle? Because that other cross there was yours. But he took it. He took your place. My master took my place. Behold what manner of love the Father has bestowed upon us. Jesus Christ himself, the sinless Son of God, lay on that cross to take my punishment, to take my sentence, which was death. And he took it on my behalf. On that cross at Calvary. Calvary, the place of wonders, the place where the Holy God comes down to find his people. The place where where the crook, there are crooks, there are crooks. It's a place where crooks, one crook gets convicted. It's a place of conviction. I pray that this Calvary will be a place of conviction for you. You cannot get to Calvary and not get convicted about your sins. What was this 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 robber convicted of? Of his son sins. Of his son sins. But at Calvary there are others also who look at how to escape. How to escape the laws and the rules and regulations because the wages of sin is death. So he turns to Jesus. He says if he was in Kenya he would say why don't you get us out of here and when we get go, we are down there We'll see what to do to you. We'll give you, we'll pay you. We'll pay you abundantly because we have stolen enough. But you know, this, this, this man was not convicted. There was no conviction. It was like the Christ, a lot of Christians today in the church. They say they are associated with Calvary. But they are not convicted of their sins. One of the robbers was convicted. This other one did not get convicted at all. He's saying the Lord, what, what is this? You are, you are telling us that you have power. You said you had power. You called yourself the Messiah. Come on, save yourself. Use that power now. We hear you used to heal the sick. Use that power. Heal her. Get, get yourself out of here and get us also. And we shall see when we get over there. And, and this, this man tells the other robber who was convicted. The one who accepted to be convicted. Because the conviction will come to every robber. It's only salvation will be to that one who accepts the conviction and humbles himself. This one humbled himself and he said to his friend, Are you not afraid? Are you not afraid that don't you fear God even at this time? And there are some people that are in strange situations. And I want to ask you, don't you fear God even now? You are in a state where you are almost dying. Don't you even fear God now? Things have been getting from bad to worse. Don't you fear God? Why don't you honor God? Why don't you humble yourself? Why don't you allow the conviction of the Holy Spirit in your life? This one says, don't you fear God? Don't you fear God even at this hour? I, it's all right to, to do whatever you want when you are out there, when you're sure you're not being caught. But now you've been caught. You are right in it. Don't you fear God? Are you crazy? How come you don't appear to fear God? And he turned to the Lord because he had heart. He was also convicted. And at Calvary is a place of mercy. He turned to the Lord and said, Lord, Master, Jesus, when you come in your kingdom, please, I want to ask you for one thing. Remember me. Remember me. I'm not worthy to be remembered, but remember me. You don't even know me, but remember me. You, you, you're just seeing me here at the cross, but remember me. Hallelujah. Jesus tells him, believe verily, verily, I say to you, tonight, tonight you shall be with me in paradise. Jesus says, you, you have obtained mercy. Yes, Calvary is a place of mercy. It's a place of mercy. It's a place where lives are changed. Calvary is a place where destinies are changed. You can exchange your destiny at Calvary. He was a man going to hell. But from that moment, his 
eternal destiny, not just the destiny here, but his eternal destiny was changed. He was taught from today. You shall be with me in paradise. Yes, Calvary is a place of repentance. People turn around to the Lord because of Calvary, the, the place of punishment for the sin of the whole world. It's a place of repentance. It's a place you will get mercy. And this is what we need to preach. We need to, you can't preach Calvary and not preach repentance. You can't preach the cross and not preach repentance. Many people today don't want us to talk about the cross. You cannot have a crossless gospel. The cross has to be there. You cannot have a Christ who has not died on the cross and get salvation. And so you need to get to know where you stand. Calvary is a place of forgiveness. Calvary is a place where our lives are changed. Calvary, there is the pl it's a place of exchange. Hallelujah. I want to mention a few things that happened at Calvary because of the death and the blood of Jesus Christ. Because blood came out. A soldier was passing there. A soldier, one of the soldiers there. They had come to break the legs of the people. They wanted to break the legs of the people, those, those robbers. They thought Jesus Christ was also one of them. But when they got to Jesus Christ, they found he was still, he had already died. So they broke the legs of these two robbers. Jesus' legs could not be broken because the Bible had said that none of your bones will be broken. So whatever the word of the Lord has said concerning you, it will come to pass. The devil cannot change it. And so one of the things that happened is redemption. Redemption. And uh, I want to mention this. Maybe you've heard it a thousand times. I wish I could speak to you a million times. Because it is the only way. Redemption is the only way. You remember Jeremiah was spoken to by the Lord. I think I shared this. God spoke to Jeremiah, told him to go and buy some land from his cousin because he had the right of redemption. You could not just buy land from anybody. You've got to, to sell it to a kinsman, to someone that will continue the name of the family. And so he was told he, had, he was the one having the right of redemption. And he says he paid the redemption price. He paid for it. And when we talk about redemption, it's the same idea. It's that you are, you are, you, you, you are rightfully held by someone else and a, a redemptive redemption price is paid. It's paid so that you can be set free. And this is what happened. I want to read from the book of Ephesians chapter 1, verse 7. Hallelujah. Redeemed. God had to pay the price. The price for your redemption. The price for you to be free. The devil held you with authority because Adam sold himself and his posterity to the devil. And so the devil has had authority over human beings until and, and God knew that Adam had sold himself. And Satan could argue with God. You said nobody can have fellowship with you. If they are sinners and Adam has sinned together with his posterity. So Adam is supposed to die with his posterity. But God because he's, he knows the law. He knows the law of the universe. He made the laws of the universe. He did not go through the back door like I see a lot of people do. He followed the law. He paid what should have been paid. The punishment that Adam and his posterity should have taken. God sent his son Jesus Christ. Who died on the cross. He paid the redemption through his blood. In whom we have been, we have redemption through his blood. 
the forgiveness of sins according to the riches of his grace. So, Jesus Christ paid the redemption price so that we became redeemed. In other words, the devil cannot hold us legally. He cannot hold us legally unless we give ourselves over to him. We are a redeemed people. We are owned by the Lord. The Lord has redeemed us. He has purchased us from the power of darkness. So we are redeemed. We have been redeemed. And Jesus Christ came as the exchange. In the book of Matthew chapter 20 verse 28. The Bible says. Even as the son of man came. Matthew 20 verse 28. Even as the son of man came. Not to be ministered unto. <laughs> That's very different from us. The preachers of today please. Can you note that verse? If you are a preacher of the gospel, the bosses in the churches, please read that verse again. Even as the Son of Man came, not to be ministered unto, but to minister. Jesus came to minister. He came to serve. Jesus came to serve. But not just that. But it says, but to minister and to give his life a ransom for many. So, Jesus Christ paid his life. He gave out his life as the ransom. Whatever needed to be settled in the eternal court of, ju of, uh, of, of judgment, Jesus settled on our behalf. So, what can we say? We can say, I the devil has no right over my life. I have been redeemed. When we say we are redeemed, we are saying I belong to God. I am the Lord's property. He redeemed me. He purchased me. I don't belong to myself. I've been redeemed by the blood of Jesus Christ. The blood that was shed that time when the soldier drove the, the spear on the side of Jesus Christ. That blood washes me. It was evidence that there was death that took place. That blood was evidence that death took place. And so that's why today we take the blood of Jesus Christ, the blood of Jesus, which is evidence that my, my, my portion, my price was paid for. I no longer belong to the devil and the devil has no right over my life. That's why we show the evidence of the blood. That's why it says they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. In other words, they showed that they've been purchased by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony. And so Jesus Christ took our place. He gave his life as a ransom, as the, as the payment for our sins so that we can be free. So in the name of Jesus, you are free today. To live for God. You are, you are free to live a life that is different. In Jesus name. So I want us to look at a number of things that we were redeemed from. In the book of Galatians. Calvary. Calvary made all the difference. Calvary. Remember to mention to the devil Calvary. Galatians 3 verse 13 to 14. The Bible says. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree, that the blessing of Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ, that we might receive the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, with that redemption, that price that God paid for us. We were redeemed from a number of things and you need to get to know them. One of them is the curse of the law. We were redeemed from the curse of the law. What is this curse of the law? You find this curse in, in Deuteronomy 28. It talks about if you don't obey the law, this is what will happen to you. Cursed is every man. Cursed is everyone that does this. 
and it's repeated in Leviticus. And it says, Cast is the one who does this, and the people will say amen. People will say amen to what will be done to you because to the curse because because you have committed you are you have that curse upon your life but the bible says that christ came to deliver us from the curse of the law cast is everyone everybody here bears the curse because all the things that are written that we we've, we've done the curse of of worshiping idols we've done our forefathers have done all kinds of curses are upon us because because we did it because we come from Adam but the good news is when Jesus Christ hung on that cross he died your death he died in your place it was a payment so that the curse of the law will not be overtake you you will not be under the curse of the law but that the blessing of Abraham would fall upon you hallelujah the curse of the law is destroyed through the blood of Jesus Christ. When the blood of Jesus was shed, the curse that brings you oppression, brings you sickness, brings you confusion, brings you tears your family apart, that curse has been broken through the blood of Jesus Christ. Christ has redeemed you, he purchased you. You don't have to be held in the curse of the enemy. You don't have to be held in the curse of sicknesses and diseases and all kinds of spiritual oppression and physical. You don't have to. Christ has redeemed you. It, it's not in the past. It's, it's not in the future. It's already in the past. Christ has redeemed you. I want you to know today you are redeemed from the curse of the law. You are redeemed. Christ has redeemed you. He redeemed you. You need to let the devil know you are redeemed. You need to say it. That's why the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. What are they redeemed from? They are redeemed from the curse of the Lord. Let them say so. Those curses that are written down, they, you don't belong there. And you were redeemed so that the blessing of Abraham, that blessing that was spoken to Abraham in the book of in the book of of uh, Genesis chapter 12 and and continuously as he got the covenant from the Lord that he was redeemed that 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 blessing that was spoken to Abraham is your blessing when he was told your your seed shall possess the gates of his enemies that promise is yours that, so that the blessing of Abraham may fall upon us the promise of the, that, that we might receive also the spirit, the promise of the spirit. That's why we have the Holy Ghost. Because we've been redeemed from the curse of the Lord. So that the spirit of the Lord would fall upon us. And we would be led and possessed by the power and the spirit of the living God. Hallelujah. We were redeemed from the power of sin. Sin is powerful. Sin is a power. Sin when you find yourself sinning, you are not just having fun. You are controlled by a power. When you find yourself a drunkard, you are controlled by a power. When you find yourself in immoral living, you are controlled by a power. When you find yourself stealing, you are controlled by a power. When you find yourself beating your wife, you are controlled by a power. When you are find yourself doing strange things that people ought not to do, it's not you. You don't say... You don't say it's just, I don't know what was happening. You are controlled by a power. That power, Jesus Christ redeemed us from the power of sin. So that we can overcome sin. Natural people cannot overcome sin. That's why. That's why it's, it's not good. If you don't have Jesus, please never go to a church and make a vow. I will love you all the days of my life. You will not do it. You can't make it. It's not that you are a bad man. It's because you are not redeemed. You are not redeemed. You are controlled by the power of darkness. And so that power of darkness keeps you from doing the will of God. And that's why a lot of Christians and a lot of preachers have been making the gospel cheap, cheap, cheap. Not knowing that we have already been redeemed from the power of sin. You have been set free from the power of sin. 
Und how do I how do I continue? It's by faith. It's by faith. You don't know why how I feel when I get angry. I just take whatever is near me and you better be away because I'll kill you. It's because you are controlled by a power. It's the power of darkness. It's the demon in your life. You need Jesus to deliver you. Some of you men have been saying, you know, men were created polygamous. It's not that they are polygamous. They have demons. It's demons that are controlling them. Bible says in 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 18, for as much as you know, 1 Peter 1 18, I'll read 18 and 19. The Bible says, for as much as you know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things as silver and gold from your vain conversation received by tradition from your fathers for, from your fathers <laughs> so there are these things we receive by tradition they are part of us they are a power to reckon with that's why you find you find yourself you 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 are leaving home and you find somewhere where you can steal I mean, you are coming from work. You want to pass through somewhere to steal. And you, you've been working. It's because of that power. That power in you that, that causes you. One man was telling me, you know, I, I normally say I will not pass through the bar. And I say today I will just move forward. I will not pass anywhere near the bar. And he says when I, rem I find out it's tomorrow morning. It's the following day in the morning. And I'm locked in in the bar. It's called the power of sin. It's the power of sin. That's what, what's happening now. The power of sin. We are hearing of people that are killing others. People that are killing their children. People that are killing their parents. People that are killing their, their lovers. Strange, strange. I killed my lover. <laughs> power of darkness. The, the power of sin. You received it by tradition. In other words, you received it through the DNA. That's why you find the same thing. The same thing. Your uncle is not educated, but he beat your wife, his wife the same way you beat yours and you are a professor. It's the power of sin. You received it by tradition. You received it by DNA. In the blood. That's why the blood of Jesus was shed. To deal with that DNA in your blood. So that you can be delivered. But it says you were not, you were not delivered. You were not redeemed with things that perish like silver or gold. That's why you should never go to a preacher to give them silver or gold. It cannot help in this process. It can't help silver or gold it can't it was the precious blood of the sinless son of God that blood that is so precious is the one that delivers us redeems us from the power of sin from the power of destruction Christ has redeemed us in other words there is power there is power you know I want to get saved, but I know I can't stop smoking. We are not talking about smoking. We are talking about the power. The power of sin. You, I, you know, I, I, can't, I, I can't stop this. I can't stop drinking. I can't stop lying. I am just a professional liar. That's how I live. That's what I eat from. I want you to know the power in the blood will set you free. Will release you. We were redeemed awesome. From the guilt of sin. Guilt of sin. We were guilty. In other words, we were not able to approach God because we were guilty. We were guilty because Adam sinned and our nature has been a nature of sin. So we were guilty before birth and on birth we were guilty. That's why we continued doing evil things because we were a guilty lot. And we could not be set free. We could not be delivered. We could not experience the goodness of God because we were guilty. The Bible says in the book of Romans chapter 3 verse 
23. I'll read from verse 23 to 26. This message, this is a basic message of salvation. If you don't get this, you not get far. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So being justified freely by his grace through the redemption that is in Christ Jesus. So what are we saying here? Uh, verse 20, 23 says, All have sinned. All have sinned. Every, all creation, all human beings have sinned. They sin in their lives. They have sinned and they come short. In other words, they fall short. They cannot get to the standard that God has set because they have sinned. They have sinned. They come short of that glory of the Lord. But the word of God says, now being justified freely by his grace. In other words, the Lord comes and when we accept Jesus, he justifies us. We get acceptance. We are counted as though we've never sinned. Our sin, the record of our sin is taken out of the way. There is no record. There is no record. There is no record. Some of you broke, in, broke into banks and if the, if the government would know, you would go behind bars. But Jesus Christ forgave you. He forgave you. He cleansed you. The blood of Jesus washes you. Justified. The Lord freely out of his own choice. Not because you asked. Not because you pleaded. Not because you came and gave a gift. Not because, you know, there's, there's a lot of uh, messing up of the gospel. A lot of people feel to get something from God, I've got to give something. I've got to give some money to get this from God. And that is not the gospel. The gospel is not about bribing God. Because people in the world today are full of bribes. In this country, to get your things moving, you need to bribe. And people's minds are tuned that I can also bribe God. So that I can get my things done. But we are justified. Freely. Freely. In other words, the Lord decided to cancel the punishment that was due to you because of your sin. Justified. He justified us through the redemption that is in Christ. Whom God sent forth to be the propitiation, the payment. Christ is the, the fulfillment, the propitiation. He paid the requirements. What he, in other words, he took care of God's wrath. God's wrath that was to come on us. Jesus Christ became the propitiation, the, the payment for that. So that now you don't have you, the wrath of God is not upon you. You are counted free. You are justified. That's why, that's one reason we need to learn to worship the Lord. Worship the Lord. We have come to worship the Lord. Bow down before him. Because he is worthy. Christ became the proposition. He became the payment. He became the settlement for our sins. So that now I can stand before the Lord and say, Father, and stand guiltless, stand guiltless. You know, when you have been justified, when you've been forgiven, the old record is no longer there. The Lord sets you free completely. It's obliterated. The handwriting that was against us is removed. So that you are justified freely by his grace. Freely. He favors you with his grace. Grace is favor. He favors you. But it is also divine ability. Which enables you to live. The life you are supposed to live. Hallelujah. So that through faith in his blood. To declare his righteousness. For the remission of sins that are past through the forbearance of God. To declare, I say, 
or at this this time his righteousness that he might be just and the justifier of him which believeth in Jesus so when you come to the lord and accept the gift the gift of god the forgiveness of god then the lord justifies you so that you become just you might be just and the lord is the justifier of him which believes if you will believe if you will believe that the sacrifice of jesus was enough that you will believe that the blood of jesus christ is enough to redeem you to take you away from the bondage of sin if you will believe that then you're going to be accepted in the presence of god you will be just you will be just because the justifier has justified you and he made you holy he's made you blameless he will make you blameless something else that happened to us we were reconciled we were reconciled you see the the bible says the wrath of god was upon us if if you don't have, if you don't have the son of god it says the wrath of god you will never see life and the wrath of god i think is is uh, john 3:36 the wrath of god rests upon the wrath of god so even though you some people may be talking about how how beautiful you are how handsome you are heaven looks at you and sees the wrath of god on your head it's terrible isn't it here people are praising you but the wrath of god is upon you you have money but the wrath of god is upon you that's why you don't enjoy it first john 4 verse 10 here in his love not that we loved god but that he loved us and sent his son to be the propitiation for our sins that, that there it comes again he becomes the propitiation for our sins beloved if god loved us so we ought also to love one another the lord came and loved us he loved us not because we loved him he came and loved us first god loves you i told you as we were beginning that this this the cross of calvary is 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 full of the love of god is backed by god's immeasurable love unbelievable love and that's why god because of this love of god here in his love that not that we loved god not that we loved god in other words we were enemies of god how the bible says by wicked works because of our wicked works we were enemies of god if you live in wicked works you are an enemy of god and god sent his son to be the propitiation the the one that takes away the wrath that was due to us jesus took it out of the way through his blood so beloved we need to love one another because god loved us so calvary is about love jesus christ came calvary was about taking away our sins john 1:29 says the next day john see jesus coming unto him and said behold the lamb of god which take away the sin of the world hallelujah the blood of jesus the the lamb of god he takes away he takes away the sin of the world he will take it away the record of your past sin he will take he will take away your present sin he will deal with your future sin the blood of jesus christ is sufficient is sufficient to deal with sin he takes away he takes away out of your life some of us have have that that sin and engraved in our body in our lives that's how we live but the lord has the power to take away the sin of the world the lord will take away your sin christians that are living in sin the lord will take away your sin take it to him that's why he says come unto me all you that labor and that are heavy laden and i will 
give you rest hallelujah this 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 redemption this blood this calvary we are talking about it gives us victory it gives us victory in the book of revelation chapter 12 verse 11 hallelujah 12 11 the bible says and they overcame him they overcame him who the devil they overcame him by the blood of the lamb this blood that was shed we overcome the devil with it child of god you are an overcomer not because you are strong not because you have money not because you have education but because of the blood of jesus christ the, the devil may not be afraid of your many degrees. He may not be afraid of your great wisdom. He may not be afraid of whatever you have. But there is one thing he will be scared about. The blood of Jesus Christ. They overcame him. So it's in the past. We are overcomers because of Calvary. Calvary translates you to an overcomer. That's who you are. That's what you need to call yourself an overcomer. Because of Calvary. So what are you saying about the situation we are in? Even where we are today, we are more than conquerors. We are overcomers. We overcome the devil. We overcome the wicked one by the blood of Jesus Christ. We overcome. We overcome. Praise the name of the Lord. I want to give you two more points on what we've been redeemed from. This redemption. This blood of redemption that was shed at Calvary. That blood. That has power in it. The Bible says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 13. There are many things I should have. I could have said about this blood. This blood that makes us whole. This blood that changes our lives. Hallelujah. It says. Who has delivered us from the power of darkness. And has translated us into the kingdom of his son. In whom we have redeemed. Redemption, that word again, redemption through his blood, even the forgiveness of sin. So I can stand and say, I am righteous. How can you say you are righteous? Nobody is righteous. I am righteous with the righteousness of Christ. I am redeemed. I am justified. I am counted righteous with the righteousness that Jesus purchased on the cross of Calvary. So the Bible says the Lord delivered us from the power of darkness and translated us. That's why I've been saying, if you say you are born again, there needs to be a transformation. You can't just, you can't just say by saying I'm saved. You were told that you are born again. It doesn't make you saved. Praying the prayer of repentance doesn't make you saved. We have a lot of people in the church that are not born again at all. Sinners. Sinners singing in the choirs. Sinners preaching. Sinners that are... Because if your life has not been affected, there's got to be an impact. When Jesus Christ comes in your life, there will be a newness. You will be a new creation. We are having these Christians who have not changed. These Christians... They say they are born again. You are born again, but you go to the same places. You are still found in the bar. You are still found out with, found with women. You are found with other, other men's husbands. You are, you are there. You are crazy. You are behaving crazy. You are dressing crazy. Nothing has changed in your life. The places you used to go is the same places you go. The friends you used to have are the same places. Your mouth has not been touched at all. It's as vulgar as it used to be. You can't be born again. There needs to be a transformation. The Holy Spirit comes and he, re, there is a rebirth, rebirth. Please hear me. There has to be a rebirth, a renewal by the Spirit so that you become a new creature. But we were taught this by faith. So I said it, I believed it, it is so. If it is so, there is going to be manifestation of the transformation. There's got to be, there's got to be a manifestation of the redemption. And I'm praying that we will get to that place where 
we can allow the spirit of the Lord to work in our lives. He has translated us from the kingdom. In other words, he broke us from the attachments of the kingdom of darkness. He broke, he, he, he broke the chains that held us in the kingdom of darkness. He translated us from the kingdom of darkness. He transferred us from that kingdom of darkness. He brought us to the kingdom of his dear son. We are not ruled by the devil anymore. We are ruled by God. We are in the kingdom of his dear son. We were translated from that kingdom where we used to do the will of the devil. Now we are set free by the power of the almighty God. We belong to the kingdom of God. We belong to a kingdom, a powerful kingdom. The Bible says we have received a kingdom that cannot be shaken. So we are in this kingdom. We were translated. That redemption translated you from the kingdom of darkness. In other words, the devil cannot control you legally. For the devil to control you, you must hand yourself over to him. Unless you hand yourself over to the devil, you are free because you are translated from the kingdom of darkness to the kingdom of the dear son of God. First Peter chapter 2 verse 24. This redemption. Hallelujah. First Peter 2 24. I read a lot of scriptures because it's the scriptures that build you. It's not stories. The stories I give you will be nothing. You better not remember any of them. If they are useless stories. But the word. You need to get in the word. Possess the word. Who is on self. Bore our sins in his body on the tree. Oh, so he bore our sins. When he was on the tree, when he was on the cross, he took our sins. He was having our sins with him. So our sins were punished in Christ. That's why it says there is no condemnation therefore to those who are in Christ Jesus because their sins were punished in Christ. Our sins in his own body on the tree. That we being dead to sins should live unto righteousness. Wow. We are dead to sins. Dead to sins. Alive to righteousness. So when sins come, they find we are dead. We are dead. Sin says, wake up. You're... You, 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 it will find out that you are not just sleeping. You are dead indeed to that sin. We were, we were dead to sins. Now we should live unto righteousness. We are alive to righteousness. There is the ability in us to do righteousness. It was impossible for us to do right. You know, there are some people who don't tell the truth. Whether there is a reason or not, you just ask them something, they tell you a lie. It's their natural way of living. They just tell lies. But you know, when it comes to Christ, that lying power is broken. And they begin to live in righteousness. They should live unto righteousness. So, lies come so that he can speak them, but the lies find he is dead. He is dead dead indeed to that sin. Praise the name of the Lord. We show, who's, by whose stripes? By whose? In that redemption. In that redemption. By his stripes. The stripes that the Lord bore on the, on the, on, when, from the soldiers. Like the Bible says in Isaiah. Yeah, surely has borne our griefs. Those sickness by his stripes we were healed. Peter repeats it. And he says, by whose stripes we were healed. We were healed. You are there, you are sick. I know there are some people who always interpret they, their doctrine. Their doctrine is about it's spiritual. When it, the Bible talks about healing, it's spiritual. Well, for me, I believe I've, I've seen it practically that Jesus Christ heals the sick. And so by the stripes of Jesus, we were healed. You can live in faith just like we died to sin. 
We are, we were healed. We were healed. And there you are sick. I want you to know you need to stand on the word of God. The word of God says you were healed. By whose strife we were healed. Hallelujah. For we were a sheep going astray. But we have now returned unto the shepherd. Come on. The shepherd doesn't give us sicknesses. The shepherd heals us. He heals us. He's the bishop of our souls. Not the archbishops of, of, of here. But the bishop. The, 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 and, and the word bishop is actually just an elder. It's, it's, uh, it's, it's, it, it's an elder of the churches. It's a title given to, to people that are in charge. And it's, it's, not, it's not what we think. But we have a bishop. We have a true bishop. Some, we have found some bishops are fake. We were following them and we found they were fake. But you have a bishop who will never be fake. Jesus Christ is the bishop of your soul. He will watch over your soul. Hallelujah. 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 Therefore, I want to read this verse that, that Paul wrote in Galatians 2.20. Galatians 2. What a scripture. What a scripture that, that we, we are reading today. And some of you have been having it there. You've not read it for years. But now read it. And please, Christians, read your Bible. Take time and read your Bible. Get off your phone. Put it down. Read your Bible. Take time with God and pray. I say again, put down that phone. Read your Bible. Read your Bible. Read up your Bible. I am crucified with Christ. <laughs> Paul says, here I am. I am crucified. I have been crucified with Christ. He says, yet not I. Is with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. <laughs> In other words, Paul is saying, you look at me, I'm a mystery. I am a mystery. I was crucified with Christ. And yet I'm alive. That's, that's the mystery I am. I was crucified with Christ, yet I am alive. The world, the world was crucified to me. And I am crucified to the world. I am crucified with Christ. Yet, he says, I'm still alive. Crucified, but still alive. <laughs> and he says, and you know, yet not I, but Christ who lives in me. And the life which I now live in this flesh, in this body, I live by the faith of the Son of God. Who loved me and gave himself for me. I live this life by faith. I appear like I am alive here but I am actually dead. I live this life by faith. Through Christ who loved me and died for me. He's the one who showed me how to die and still live. How to overcome death. He's the one who showed me. Hallelujah. Who loved me and he gave himself for me. I told you Calvary is about the love of God. Jesus gave himself for me. You tell me no man loves me. Come on. Jesus loves me. You tell me I don't, I don't measure up. The Lord has already accepted me I'm in, among the beloved. Child of God, you are not as useless as people have told you. As the world is telling you. You are told unless you appear like this. Unless you put on this kind of dress. Unless you talk like this. Unless you go, you get befriended to so and so. You are not, you don't mess shut up. Come on. We are different. We are the children of God. We are called by the name of the Lord. And I must close by this verse. Galatians 6, 14. Hallelujah, everybody will shout when you, when you get to read this verse. Something in you will cry out. The Bible says, Paul says, but God forbid, God forbid, God forbid, let it never happen that I should glory, that I should boast, that I should glory, save in the cross of our Lord Jesus Christ. If I'm going to 
to boast. If I'm going to boast, let me not boast about my abilities, not my, about my appearance, not about what I have achieved, but let me boast about Christ. Let me boast about Christ. Let me boast about the cross. The cross. We used to sing a song. I never hear it these days. The cross before me, the world behind me. But to a lot of people, the world came before. And the cross went behind. But Paul says, God forbid. God forbid that I will be rejoicing with people. That I will be boasting about things that don't matter. God forbid that I will boast. That I will magnify anything or magnify myself. Or try to identify myself with certain people. Certain music. Certain preaching. Certain, certain things. Certain, a certain way of getting money. God forbid. God forbid that I, I will boast about those things. Except on the cross of Christ. And he says, by whom the world is crucified to me. <laughs> May God help us that we will be crucified to the world and the world will be crucified to us. We are not the people of this world. Let the world, oh my God, let's remember the cross. Let's take the cross. Jesus said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself. In other words, let him not boast about himself. Let him not boast about his appearance. Let him not boast about his achievement. Let him not boast about his prayer life. Let him not boast about his preaching. Let the person that boasts, boast in that he knows the Lord. By whom the world has been crucified unto me. And I am crucified to the world. From today when the world invites you, you better say, you know, world, I'm crucified. I am crucified with Christ. I am not, I'm not compatible with the world. I am crucified with Christ who lives in me. And because of that cross, I am the Lord's. God forbid. God forbid that young man, you will boast in anything else except the cross of Christ. God forbid that you mothers will boast about anything about, except the cross of Christ. God forbid that us preachers will boast about anything else besides the cross of Jesus Christ. When they got to Calvary, there they crucified him so that you would boast about him and so that you would be redeemed from the curse of the Lord and you will experience the glory of the Lord. Let's take a moment and check on our lives. Let's check our lives. Jesus said, if any man would come after me, let him deny himself. Let him take up his cross and follow me daily. Daily follow the Lord. Would you want to follow the Lord? Take up the cross. Take up the cross and follow the Lord. For when they got to Calvary there, they crucified him. And there is mercy. There is mercy at Calvary. At Calvary, a thief found that he could repent. And he found he could be forgiven. He found that his destiny could be changed forever. And even for you, your destiny can be changed forever. The enemy has been sitting over your life. But the cross, there is power in the cross. In the cross. In the cross. Let my glory be there forever. In the cross. Let your boasting be on the cross. That you will say with Paul. God forbid. God forbid. God forbid that I will boast myself in sin. In wickedness. 
God forbid. God forbid that I will live under the oppression of the devil. They overcame him by the blood of the Lamb. By the word of their testimony. The blood turns you to an overcomer. You are an overcomer because of the cross. Because of the cross. Let the power of the cross deliver you today. If you are living in sin, let the power of the cross deliver you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the power of the cross deliver you. Set you completely free. Let the power of the cross lift you today. In that name that's above every name, I'm praying for those that are sick in their bodies. The word of God has just said, by whose stripes we were healed, you were healed. Let the power of Calvary, let the power that was released that time, let it reach you now. Let it heal your sick body. Let it heal your life. Let it even heal your family. Let this power deliver you today. In Jesus' mighty name. Let the forces of darkness that oppress your people be broken in Jesus' mighty name. I'm praying for the healing of families, Lord. Families that are breaking because of demonic forces that are moving over this land. In Jesus' name, I'm announcing a healing of the families in Jesus' name over our young people, over the teenagers, so mighty God, that are threatened with evil. In Jesus' name, I'm calling upon the name of the Lord, destroying the kingdoms of darkness, destroying all the devices of the wicked one, O oh Lord God Almighty. Let there be a turning to you, Almighty King. In the name of Jesus Christ, let, your, let the glory of the Lord flow. Let the glory of the Lord flow. Lord, we come against the spirit of the COVID in Jesus' name. Destroying its impact. Destroying the plans of the devil. In Jesus' name, we scatter the enemies. Let God arise. Let God arise against COVID. Let all his enemies be scattered. Let the enemies of God be scattered this day in the name of Jesus Christ. The enemies that are rising against you, let them be scattered by the Lord God Almighty. In the name of Jesus, there is power in your name. You are the God that works miracles and I pray that you will work miracles in the lives of your people to the glory of your wonderful name. We want to thank you and honor you and exalt you Lord of Lords and King of Kings in Jesus mighty name. Amen. Amen. The Lord bless you. I pray that the Spirit of the Lord will work in your life. That you're going to experience God like never before in your life. In Jesus' mighty name. Um, for We'll be continuing on Tuesday, 8 o'clock. In, the, in, the, in, the, in, in, our, in the evening. And on Thursday again, same time, I want to ask you to invite your friends and share this message with your friends. And the Lord will richly bless you. God bless you. Let the peace of God rest upon you. In Jesus' name, amen.